Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here, and <clears throat> it is Friday, June 25th, 2021, and the little dog and I have hip campers coming in for the weekend, and we got to get ready for our, our guest here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, but for get busy with that we got to do what we do every Friday and that is bring you <clears throat> our ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to uh, mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at Mongabay with their weekly broken record laundry list of uh, assaults against this planet as, as Manga Bay continues to chronicle the collapse of a planet with a few little sprinkles of hopium and it is a full usual load of, <clears throat> of stuff here. Uh, again guys, I will only get to touch on probably half of these stories and you can go on mongabay.com yourself and get this delivered to your own uh, mailbox if you just want to depress yourself without letting me do it for you. We're going to start off here. Uh, now this is not, I'm 99% sure anyway, this is not the same study that I was talking about, I believe it was just yesterday, about that UN study talking about how uh, we have already passed these unstoppable climate tipping points and uh, that kind of stuff. This is, that story was never mentioned in Manga Bay. Pro, they'll, they'll talk about that next week, but Instead, they have this one, which of course was never mentioned anywhere on the mainstream media. The only place I've heard of this is right here. So we're going to start here. <clears throat> Earth tipping points could destabilize each other in domino effect. Could the Earth's tipping points have been destabilizing each other in a domino effect? Oh, I use the year 1970 as when the real domino effect began. Okay. A new risk analysis has found that the tipping points of five of Earth's subsystems, five of Earth's subsystems, that would be the Amazon rainforest, the West Antarctic ice sheet, the Greenland ice sheet, the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, the AMOC, you know, that big conveyor belt in the Atlantic Ocean, and the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which I think is the big conveyor belt in the Pacific Ocean, could interact with each other in a destabilizing manner. Do you think so? The study suggests that these changes could occur even before temperatures reach 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, which is the upper limit of the Paris Agreement. The interactions between the different tipping elements could allow lower critical temperature thresholds, essentially allowing tipping cascades, I love that point, that term, tipping cascades, to occur earlier than expected. Hmm. Experts not involved in the study say the findings are a significant contrib contribution to the field I guess meaning the field of the collapse of the planet, but they do not adequately address the time scales over which these changes could occur. Yes, we will see about the uh, faster than previously thought as tipping points become 
tipping cascades. And simply because I uh, realize I'm going to be talking to myself here in a few minutes, I, I'm just going to jump right down to the very last story. I was going to start with that tipping point cascade story and wrap up with their very last story. Uh, the title says it all, Never Too Late to Save Earth. It is never too late to save the earth as tipping points become tipping cascades. Okay, so now let's just get back uh, between the bookends and look at all the reasons it's never too late to save the planet. Uh, a lot of stuff about the, you know, the ramping up violence against, uh, you know, indigenous leaders and what. Here's under assault at home, indigenous leaders get a violent welcome in Brasilia. Three indigenous leaders were reported s seriously injured after Brazilian police fired rubber bullets and stun grenades at them in the capital of Brasilia. The incident comes as indigenous groups from across Brazil gather to protest against violence and invasions that they face in their own lands. So they trek to the capital and promptly get hit by rubber bullets. Uh, they're in Brasilia to press Congress to halt deliberations of legislation that they call the, quote, Bill of Death that would severely undermine indigenous rights on the day after the confrontation where, they, where the cops fired on the protesters, the bill was approved by a congressional commissions. Do you think so? Anyway, more. They have several stories. Uh, about a whole series of stories here about these protests down in Brazil. We're going to just look at one more and then we're going to move on. With indigenous rights at stake in Brasilia, a, an indigenous territory is tacked in Pará. As lawmakers tussle over the future, tussle over the future of indigenous land rights in Brazil's capital, indigenous people in a municipality in Rio de Janeiro state are fending off attacks and threats by settlers who reject their ancestral land rights over the territory. Do you think so? Uh, the attacks come amid ongoing violence in indigenous reserves where illegal miners have invaded indigenous lands in search of gold. Blah, blah, blah. But we're going to move for this uh, hilarious <coughs> piece of hopium. In Scotland, the rewilding movement looks to the past to plan its future. This is talking about Scotland trying to go back to the way it looked before humans got there. Uh, <clears throat> Scotland is the site of an ambitious rewilding project with a centuries-long timeline for restoring the forest that once blanketed the now familiar landscape of barren moors a centuries-long timeline. There you go. We have uh, centuries, centuries to rewild the planet. I think they better speed up that timeline. Did you know that the UK is one of the least forested countries in Europe? 
Anyway, okay, guys, there is a lot. Uh, gee, have we ever heard this story at any point in 10 years of doing this roundup every week? <clears throat> Deforestation of orangutan habitat feeds the global palm oil demand. Yes. Palm oil giant Royal Golden Eagle has allegedly sourced the commodity from a plantation responsible for deforesting prime orangutan habitat in Sumatra, which would constitute a violation of the group's own no deforestation policies. Yes. Do you think so? Never heard of that one before. Um, there's one I want to, okay, right, well, not right next to that one, but right below it. Demand for soy puts pressure on the Pantanal, Brazil's largest wild wetland. Where have we heard this story 300 times before? Global demand for soybean has seen annual production of the crop in Brazil soar from 30 million tons in the year 2000 to 125 million tons of soy coming out of Brazil this year. Most of the agrochemicals consumed in Brazil are used on this one crop. Soybean farming, uh, we just said, accounts for most of the agrochemicals used in Brazil. Uh, and <clears throat> farming activity is now seeing those chemicals washing downstream to the Pantanal wetlands. Yes. Uh, scientists have shown that waterways feeding the Pantanal are contaminated and silted up. Do you think so? Okay. Couple of hopium pieces. Yes. How about high end tourism? saving Mozambique from uh, the planet Nibblers. Yes, okay. We have camera traps raising conservation hopes in Vietnam. I guess so, uh, you know, this is one where I saw this one actually is in the mainstream media. I think it's the, one of the top five stories on the planet today about uh, these in, the increasing use of these camera traps uh, to help uh, people looking for almost extinct animals to, you know, to go out and find where they live so they can get out there on the mainstream media and publish photos of all of these critically endangered animals and and, and tell where the photo was taken, plaster it across the mainstream media so the wildlife traffickers can pick up the daily paper and find out where the last, I don't know, how about the Anamite striped rabbit or the Ostom's palm civet where... Uh, they can go out and kill the last animite striped rabbit thanks to the camera traps. Okay, a couple of stories on the subject of not all rescued animals should be released back into the wild. Yes. Uh, you know, how many of these animals that they release back into the wild uh, end up in somebody's stew pot the next day. Here, we've talked about the, let's go over to Cambodia. 
where rights group demand end to Cambodia's persecution of green activists. Yes. <clears throat> A court in Cambodia has charged three environmental activists from the group Mother Nature Cambodia after they documented waste dumping in a river near the royal palace. This is just the latest instance of authorities cracking down on environmental activists in the country after three other Mother Nature Cambodia staff were convicted in May for planning a peaceful protest against the backfilling of a lake. Okay, what is going on uh, below all of these various dams in the Amazon rainforest? Amazon dams, no clean water and fish dying. Do you think so? Uh, villagers living, they're just looking at the Telus Pires and Sal Manuel dams attest to poor water quality, lack of drinking water, increased malaria, and rashes since the dams were built on their river. They say there has been little response from the dam companies. Yes, indigenous people say the Brazilian hydroelectric projects have altered river ecology along with thousands of years of their cultural practices. Migratory fish and other game fish have been greatly diminished. Do you think so? All right, from hydropower to wind power. This is for, uh, you know, all of these little deluded greenies uh, holding up wind power, saving the planet with wind power in Brazil. Okay, so the hydroelectric dams are taken out. The migrating fish, how about macaws? threatened by planned wind farm in Brazil, experts warn. French renewable energy developer, uh, you know, I love that contradiction in terms, energy, renewable energy developer, Voltelia plans to install 81 wind turbines in Brazil's, but he has stayed in an area that is the main refuge of the endangered Lear's macaw. macaw. Uh, conservationists warn that the birds will collide with the turbines, especially because they fly at dawn and dusk when visibility is poor. Yes, fewer than 1,500 Lear's macaws remain in the area. Uh, there you go. So we have the McCalls getting ready to be shredded by the Save the Planet windmills. Uh, all right. Farmers in the Amazon could earn nine times more money and prevent ecosystem collapse at the same time. Moving on on some article about uh, threats to gorillas. Do you think so? Uh, imagine that. Uh, good Lord. Um, okay, we're looking at a story about uh, Manga Bay is the only place on the planet you will find this story about charcoal. Uh, you know, planet nibbling that uh, people never think of charcoal as being one of the main drivers of deforestation. They're just looking at uh, Cambodia here. This is a story on planet nibbling. 
where all of the, you know, as the population mushrooms out of control in all of these countries, how do you think people are cooking their food? They're cooking their food over charcoal. Take a wild guess where charcoal comes from. Uh, education is a key strategy for implementing the shift away from charcoal and just burning you know, plant all firewood as their use is ingrained in the culture. Yes. Uh, okay, they've already talked about this story recently. This is just uh, the latest story. Uh, when it comes to carbon capture, tree invasions can do more harm than good. Uh, you know, talking about this, this BS little greeny story that all we have to do is, is plant 10 trillion trees all over the planet to save the planet. Uh, when more and more research is coming in, you don't plant trees where trees are not supposed to live. Good Lord. Dog? Good Lord. That is one way to uh, get me to get put you off the table. My God, we have some, a methane release alert going on uh, on this table. One foot from my nose. Okay. Finally, we have some... Uh, some... Uh, intelligent commentary on this elephant herd in China from a man I'm pretty sure I have interviewed, William Lawrence. Have I interviewed William Lawrence on this channel? I think I have. Anyway, so William has a commentary about the inconvenient truth about all of this cutesy little uh, media attention being paid to the ele wandering elephant herd in China. <clears throat> China's efforts to accommodate its wandering elephants is overshadowed by its conflicts with elephants elsewhere. Yes, uh, this is William Lawrence's take on a herd of 15 Asian elephants that is making headlines. <clears throat> quote, this is quoting uh, Bill Lawrence, quote, <clears throat> no one knows exactly where the elephants are going or why, but two things are clear. The elephants were probably struggling to survive in their native habitat and Chinese efforts to save the elephants clash with the nation's aggressive strategies of investment and global development, close quote. Lawrence argues that while China's efforts to accommodate this particular herd of 15 elephants is notable, its activities beyond its borders are jeopardizing the continued survival of the species. He cites habitat destruction at home and large-scale infrastructure projects abroad, fueling demand for the ivory trade as examples. I'm pretty sure it was Bill Lawrence, come to think of it, uh, According to, I'm thinking, I'm quoting Bill here, it might have been somebody, someone else. I think this was Bill who was pointing out in his interview with me, it is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is, according to this man, the single biggest threat to planet Earth out there. The number one threat to planet Earth is not climate change. The number one threat to this planet is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative with no help from the rest of this planet.
no help, China, through the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, will take down this planet over the next 30 years. And of course, now here in our own country, our planet-saving president, Joe Biden, is claiming he is going to outdo the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative by reviving the uh, U.S. Belt and Road Inif Initiative. Uh, anyway, guys, I could go on and on with this, but uh, I think we get it. Uh, here's more articles on that cargo boat sinking off of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Uh, wow. Deforestation spikes in Virunga National Park in the DRC. Satellite data has detected several dramatic spikes in deforestation activity in Virunga National Park this year. Do you think so? Um, you know, it's home where all those mountain gorillas live. The park's major threats include logging for charcoal production and clearing for agriculture, both of which are driven by what word? If you're thinking a manga bay is going to say driven by overpopulation, pull your head out of you know where. Driven by poverty. Well, shut up there. Uh, Myanmar's growing reliance on extractives for cash raises concerns. Uh, here's the songbird trade. Here is rush to turn black diamonds into cash eats up Uganda's forest. Yes. As recently as 2018, only 42% of Ugandans had access to electricity, as many were too poor to afford it. Uh, and talking, uh, then they go from there to charcoal. Uh, those using charcoal account for roughly 23% of the country's total population. Uh, which means that about 11 million citizens in the nation of 46 million rely on charcoal to cook their meals. Charcoal producers are working hard to meet this exploding demand, degrading and depleting the nation's forest reserves. <clears throat> uh. Then more about climate change in the Amazon. And then winding up with never too late to save Earth. Okay, Sancho, that is it. We are done with this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. If you appreciate uh, Rhett Butler's hard work, please take a moment to... Give Rhett and the boys and girls some love by upload, up thumbing this video and sharing it and liking it and whatever. But with all that done, we need to get out there and uh, get out the lawnmower and the weed whacker and the whatever to get ready for uh, hip campers. Coming in for the weekend. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar Hip Camp. <clears throat> Sancho would love to say hi. Bye, guys. <clears throat>
All right, did you survive that? Are you ready to go get some chippies? Here's a pop. I have been ready to go get some chippies. You have been over here ranting for too long. You go get that chippy like that.